I think yeah. that's also you were the one who encouraged me to buy the book. I bullied everyone. <laughs> you said, buy the book. The young man should cut you out. I mean, you're in the devil's peak as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Because yeah. I knew what she was talking yeah. about. Um, and I think with Naledi, I don't want to say too much about the character because I can't. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Eddie from SA Film Chronicles. Uh, please introduce yourselves, your name, your surname, and your character in Heart of the Hunter. You can start, Nile. Hi Eddie, my name is Nicole Fertain, and I play Naledi in Heart of the Hunter. I am Milan Murray, I play the character Bess in The Heart of the Hunter. Hi, I am Masasa Mbangeni, and I play Malimi Mambi in Heart of the Hunter. Amazing. Um, I want to start with Milan. You're an author. You've written a series of books yourself. And now you are playing a character in a book adaptation, um, which is quite fascinating for me. Uh, in terms of, you know, having that author background and well, that author experience, um, how did you approach your character of Beth and how did it influence your portrayal of your character? I think as an author, it is, you either struggle with storyline or you struggle with dialogue when you're writing. And I think um, when you are an actor, you then have an appreciation for dialogue specifically because someone can write the action and the action translates to screen, but dialogue can fall flat. And I have to commend Dion Mayer and, and the whole team that did the adaptation of his book for this film, The Heart of the Hunter, that I think they created these beautiful, different, unique characters. And Beth specifically is very stoic, staccato. And I, as an author, had an appreciation for the writing when I had to step into my actor role and interpret Beth. So great appreciation and, and loved the script, really did. Yeah. I found, that, I found that very interesting, you know, even when I discovered that, I mean, you're an author, and I was like, I wonder what goes through an author's mind that's now, you know, that's, that's an actress as well, and, you know, how, how they balance the two, so, yeah. I do think you cannot mention my name as an author and Dion Mayer's name. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. No, I you should know. You absolutely can. Yes. Yeah, no, I was in your own right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nicole and Masasa, how did you guys navigate the you know, the, the, the book adaptation process um, and ensuring that your character and the story remains true to the script. For the That's a great years. question. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, story is important. I'm that sort of actor. Story is king. Um, and so I was a bit obsessive about the, the book. Like I probably read it back to back, highlighted, came up with quotes that I wrote on my, my script. It is an adaptation, so Malime is slightly different to Miriam, but at the heart of, of all of it is this deep love for Zugo slash uh, Tobelam by Bailey in um, Heart of the Hunter, the book. And so for me as an actor, it was quite uh, exciting to find moments where I could incorporate that love that I'd read about. I mean, there's this beautiful part in the book where Dion Mayer describes the first time that... Um, that Uma, oh, Miriam and Tobela are intimate and he explores her stretch marks. It is the most beautiful. I've never heard someone talk so lovingly about stretch marks, right? Mm. Um, something that's normally frowned upon and, and you're like, oh, you're unattractive, but he, he writes. So I loved capturing those moments and finding moments of intimacy and celebrating the female form in our script. Um, but yeah, it was great. I definitely read the book and, and it let that inform a lot of the decisions that I made. In, mm. in how I portrayed Uma Lime. Yeah. It's important, mm. yeah. And I just to add on to that, I think yeah. Sasa also, you were the one who encouraged me to buy the book. I bullied everyone. <laughs> you said, buy the book. The young man should cut you out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're in the devil's peak as well, yeah. so, yeah. Because she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think with Naledi, I don't want to say too much about the character because I can't. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> um, 
but I knew that she was an kind of uh, an ad- an adaptation, but amalgamation of two characters in the book, mm. a man and a woman coming together, and I think that really informed um, some of the choices that I made mm. about how to play her. And I thought a lot about masculinity and femininity, and also then being a part of some of the action sequences. What does that mean for the feminine side, mm. and how can I bring that into that world? And then also the flip side of that where in the beginning there's a reliance on the femininity, but the inner world is also quite tough and fierce and meticulous and structured. Mm-hmm. So there was there was definitely that kind of interesting thing to play with and make decisions about as an actor. Um, and I think also uh, it's important to say that there were multiple adaptations of the script, mm-hmm. um, okay. I think by Willem Hrobler, if I'm not mistaken. So... It's been a journey mm. for Heart of the Hunter um, yeah. to get here, and I think it's, I think that's part of why it's so exciting is this collaboration and this creativity in in bringing this world together. Yeah, mm. Masasa, um, I loved the, the 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 bond that your you your character and Parker's character had. Yeah. Like it was mm. so beautiful. I mean, you could say that he's your son. Yeah. Like you know. You know, in in reality, yeah. uh, how, how much time did you spend with him on set and even in you know, in pre-production yeah. before that. So um, I'm glad that you noticed that because we were intentional about creating that bond. Um, and again, in the book, it gives us that that base of, of her relationship with her son, or Miriam, in the book. So it's important that she is a mother and she loves her child. Um, how much time did I spend a lot with Buleng? What an incredibly talented mm. little man. Mm. Um, it's very hard to find, um, because it's just a different worldview to find um, child actors who act. It really is. In America, they turn them out because that's just the way that that system operates, right? Yeah. But here in South Africa, it's not, it's getting there. Um, so Buleng and I first met at our audition, and he was a very you know, it's a sax boy. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Yes. And I said, hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, the joy for me around Wuleng is that I treated him the same way that I treat my colleagues. He's a child, yes, but he's my colleague. And mm. I respected his boundaries. Um, and I think because I gave him that, he felt safe. Mm. He didn't feel like um, you're talking down to me or you don't see my contribution. He felt so it was important for me to make him feel safe because I thought, well, what is important for me as an actor, as an adult actor? Is yeah. safety is intimate. If I'm, especially if I'm going to be intimate, emotionally intimate with someone, I need to know that I'm safe with you. So, um, through the rehearsal process, we made a, a concerted effort with his mom, with his family. So, shout out to his parents as well for being so generous with their child, because you don't know when you hand over your child um, to a set how they're going to be treated. Are they going to be treated with kindness, with respect, with um, respecting their agency and autonomy, understanding their boundaries. Um, and I think because, I mean, we even went to church together, um, his parents and Bonko and I, um, Mandla rehearsed us together. And, and I think for, for me, what created that bond is that I, I, as the adult was fully aware that I am dealing with a child, but also I'm dealing with a child who has their own desires and passions and, and, and so it wasn't like, yo, you're going to listen to me. It was like, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. I, I approached it and I think Mandla is a director that's like this. He approaches a process with radical curiosity. So I met Buleng with radical curiosity and he reciprocated and mirrored that back to me. And I think that's what, I'm glad that you picked up on that because it really was a concerted effort of how do I respect my fellow actor and how do I show this deep love that this mother, and we even had a little totem. Um, oh. It was a, a, a mommy elephant and her baby elephant. Oh. Um, and, and if you look carefully, you'll see it in, in the car or you'll see, you'll find it. Because yeah. Manza does stuff like that. He'll put He's something. very intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything. He'll yeah. put something um, like very M. Night Shyamalan of him, mm-hmm. but he'll put something that only you will know because no. you'll go, oh, uh, there it is. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd like yeah. to yeah. add to that, though. Sure. I really want to challenge an audience that don't think that they would normally go and see a thriller mm. to come and watch The Heart of the Hunter because of this beautifully endearing family story. Mm. I think that whatever she's described now is it translates so beautifully to screen. Mm. So anybody who's got a heart for family and for that bond between mother and mm. child and and the, the nuclear family, it's it's worth mm. coming to watch The Heart of the Hunter for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Milan, to, to add on to that, um, elections are around the corner, mm. right? And this film has 
a large context of a, like a political theme to it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in terms of corruption, it exposes some of the corruption that happens in, in government. Mm -hmm. And there's many films around the world that we're aware of that, that do that. But I specifically think that, you know, this one, it really, it, from a South African film perspective, it kind of highlighted, you know, like the, what is that thing? I forgot it. I forgot it. State capture. Yes, state capture. That it, it highlights that. But you know, how important is it um, for a film of this caliber to bring, uh, you know, such a conversation, especially with elections around the corner for our country? I think Netflix did a great job in 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 in, in releasing it now. So I think it is a topical. Um, theme right now. I think what we as a cast experience more than, than the topic itself is the fact that we can unite as South Africans because that is what we have felt as a cast in creating this piece of art. Yeah. And yes, we touch on the themes of the day and people see themselves reflected in that. But we don't take a specific stand I think we highlight the issues, mm -hmm. we create the talking points, and then we say, look at what we have created and, as artists in this country, mm -hmm. and that should move across la political, religious, uh, 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 educational lines to the rest of our beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And that is what should be celebrated, I think. And also, also I think, um, or one of my favorite things about making art and being a part of telling stories is that a lot of the time, my favorite kinds of films um, ask questions mm. instead of trying to answer them. And I think that is something that Heart of the Hunter does. Mm. And I also think to touch on the fact that it is a political thriller, and we've mentioned the family bond, we also have romance in Heart of the Hunter. We have a powerful conglomerate of strong female characters as well. So we're touching on womanhood. We're touching on a lot of things that are topical and universal, but also personal. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and good art should make you feel something. It mm. should make you talk. Mm. So I think what Nicole said is so Im important that it is reflecting us to ourselves and going, do you like what you see? Mm. So the topic around corruption perhaps is an invitation for us as South Africans to dialogue on, do you like what you see? And if you don't, you should vote. Spot on, spot on. Nicole, mm -hmm. um, what what emotions were you going through? I mean, do you, do you have a stunt double, right? I did not. You didn't? You did not? No. This is perfect. This is a perfect question <laughs> for you. What emotions were you going through? And please don't mention what happened. I'm but full time before best. jumping from the PI building onto the scaffolding, what emotions <laughs> were you going through? Um, I think a lot of my emotions probably measured the character in some ways. Um. I one thing I had to really kind of push aside is excitement because Nicole, the actor, was really excited to do all these things. I had worked on an action film before and I played the action hero's wife. And on that set, I saw him doing all the things and I said to myself, mm, this is something that I definitely want to try. Um, and so I was, as the actor, I was excited to do all of these things um, because I know that, that we don't always get the opportunity to, to do that or to be trusted to do that. Um, but of course I was incredibly nervous and yeah. I think the adrenaline that I had definitely informed the character and how um, we played we played that out. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing guys. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for making time for this interview. And you guys are amazing. And congratulations on, on Heart of the Hunter. And I just want to say to all of you guys at home, please check out Heart of the Hunter, 29th of March, only on Netflix.